All right, I'll just say it. It's Octoprint. The best thing you can do for a 3D printer is put Octoprint on it. But there's some problems. There's no good projects, at least in my opinion, to allow you to use a more powerful Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4 with the Prusa i3. And that allows you to do cool things like time lapses. I also want the ability to adjust where my camera is pointing without having to like reclip my camera to something. So those are my constraints. Uh, I couldn't find anything that met them. So I'm just gonna make something and hopefully this benefits you as well. So let's jump right into it. So let's go over version one of the project first. Here you can see that I'm using Lockline for the uh, camera poseability. I also went with a Raspberry Pi camera, which was a mistake. One design element that I did really want though is I wanted to use the built-in power supply on the Prusa to power my project. So I ran some wires underneath the printer, behind the control box, and up to a boost buck converter that powers the Raspberry Pi. I'll zoom in here and you can see these really thin wires. That was another problem. These caused the Raspberry Pi to undervolt. I'll address that later. The main problem though has to be this Raspberry Pi camera. I mean, I tried everything to get it to focus better, but the quality just really isn't there. So. The main thing with version 2 is I want to replace the camera to be something that just looks a lot better. The Raspberry Pi camera I'm using uses this flat cable, and sadly that means I have to reprint this. So I just made it to be a, a circle like this, and uh, yeah, talk about perfect fit, huh? Luckily this wasn't too hard to do because the wonderful people at Prusa open sourced all of the hardware for their 3D printer. So I was able to download this, throw it into Fusion 360, and then design uh, my little thing right off of it. So there's the part that I opened up. And then down over here, we got the little bit that the camera connects to. Pretty easy. So now that's all printed out, all I have to do is pop it onto the lock line and throw a little bit of super glue where the 3D print connects to it so it can't move around. I'm gonna speed through the disassembly. It's pretty basic. I'm sure you can figure it out if you go to print this, but I will take a second and uh, let's look at this wire because this was definitely a problem. Yeah, there really isn't much copper there. Uh, this definitely was the problem causing the under voltage. The boost butt converter was definitely rated at enough to power the Pi, so we're gonna replace that later. Uh, my cat decided to jump up and help me. That part, not so bad, but getting this lock line together was a huge pain. The solution, just to clamp it to the table and just give it a good push. So with that together, I'm just gonna go ahead and reassemble everything. The biggest thing to uh, keep in mind is that you need to attach the boost butt converter before you attach the Raspberry Pi because there's some uh, hidden nuts for the boost butt converter that are underneath where the Raspberry Pi is. I really struggled to get this back on. I guess I forgot my t uh, <laughs> the last tip. Uh, so I asked my assistant to come over, hold that down, had it clamped for the table, and pop, in it goes. A little bit of super glue to make sure that part doesn't move and we can throw it back on the printer. I did put a tiny little bit of VHB tape uh, right on the top uh, just to prevent any movement. In retrospect, I really don't think it was needed, but it doesn't hurt to have it there. I just slid it in, uh, pulled, pulled uh, the cover off with some tweezers and then screwed it down nice and tight. All right, well, with that all screwed down, I can flip the printer back around and we can test the uh, the mobility that that lock line gives the camera. I figured most of the time the camera would probably be positioned kind of at the front, like that. But by having it on this lock line for some taller prints, you know, I can really get a high angle. Uh, I can move it around to either corner of the print bed. A lot of posability options. So to fix that under voltage issue, I grabbed some female headers. I'm just loading up the pin with some solder. Got some nice thick wire. Also gonna load that up with some solder. And I'm doing this so I don't melt the plastic on, uh, on the header. If I tried to uh, directly heat up the, the pin or the wire and just put solder on there, uh, it, would, it would probably heat up the pin too much and it would melt that plastic. So that's why I put solder on both sides first. Lastly, I'm just going to put some shrink tubing on. Don't skip this step. Uh, it really adds like a, a level of professionalism to your project, and it's pretty cheap to get uh, shrink tubing. You don't even really need a heat gun. I just, I just use a lighter. So now that I have those wires on, uh, I measured them, I stripped them, and they just go right over the top and into the top of the boost butt converter. 
Don't worry about putting them through the little loops. Uh, those are wire management for the camera cord and we'll show that later on in this video. Similar process for the bottom ones, uh, trim it to size, strip the wires, and they just screw right in. One important thing though, is you want to get a multimeter and test the out, uh, voltage output before you power it on because from the factory, that boost butt converter might be too high voltage for your Raspberry Pi and it could damage it. I already had the voltage set correctly because I did a redesign. So I did that uh, on the, the version one and the boost butt converter was already set to the correct voltage for this uh, version two. Some cable ties make quick work of the wire management. Just tighten those up. And then we can tuck the wires in uh, kind of behind the Raspberry Pi. I'm just using the back of a pair of tweezers to, to really squeeze it in there. If you need to, you can always use a little bit of hot glue or something to, to hold the wires down, but I didn't need it. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up version two. The only thing left to do is do a quick test print and check on the quality of the camera. And wow, what an improvement. It's almost YouTube quality. Definitely good enough for a channel my size. That last little print that you saw, that's like a little supporting mod. You might or might not need it. Um, I'll throw it in the comments or in the video description anyway. It's basically just a extra support to hold the lock line close to the door frame. I, it wasn't really needed for time lapses, but watching the live feed of the camera, if I ran my printer too fast, it would get a little shaky. So it just helps keep it a little bit more stable. All in all though, it fits in my 3D printer closet really neatly. It's really nice being able to quickly pop open that magnetic holder and be able to adjust the camera. So with that, one last test print. If you like this project, if it helped you out, uh, it really does help me if you subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, go ahead, throw a comment down below. I always try to answer them. If you have any questions or if you make this yourself, I'd love to hear about it. Well, as always, thanks for watching and I hope I see you around.